Aloha! I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm excited to journey with you as we learn how to take your health back. We're streaming live from the studios of Think Tech Hawaii in downtown Honolulu and from my home office in Waikiki. Today, we will be talking story with Jonathan Masaki Shiroma. Wait, let me rephrase that. We will be talking with Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Masaki Shiroma of the California National Guard and Chief of Media Relations, who resides in Sacramento, California. So let's welcome Jonathan Masaki. You said my rank, so now I got to behave. I can volla and make any kind. So thank you for, <laughs> thanks for the introduction. Yes, I'm in Sacramento and glad to be here, Wendy. Yeah, well, you can take the boy out of the, out of the city, but you can't take the country out of the boy, right? That's, That's right. Yes. That's me. Yes. And I know you're a good boy from Maui. So before we get started, let's learn a little bit about you, Jonathan, and the good son that you are, um, <laughs> born and raised in Maui. Tell us okay, maybe my, my mom might not agree everything with you just said, but thank you for that kind words. Yeah, I grew up in Maui. <laughs> I went to Maui High School. I graduated a long time ago. I won't say the exact year. <laughs> and I went to University of Hawaii at Hilo. And then after graduation, started to work in radio first and then we bridged off into TV. My first TV job was with KHON TV News. I was uh, on the assignment desk there. I would hand Joe Moore his weather scripts and whatnot. And then I moved over to KGMB 9 News and became a reporter. And from there, I bridged on to uh, Sacramento, where I did for maybe about five or six years uh, news here, and then was about to go into a bigger position with a different network in kind of a national way. And then I got deployed as a soldier to Iraq. So that kind of wraps up the last 25 years, well, <laughs> maybe even more of my life. Okay, but that's well, let's, let, let's take it a little bit slower than that then. So when I first saw you, you were doing television. Exactly. And I believe that now I was going to ask you if I could mention the station, but you did. So you were with KGMB. And I know back in the day, so what year were you at KGMB? I was actually on air at KGMB from 1998 through 2000, about two and a half years. Wow. Yeah. And so that's pretty much, I mean, I, I heard you were on the other station and then you went to KGMB. Yes. Um, I know that um, every time you come back to town, you always make it a point to go and visit your buddies there. So do, are, are, are there anybody, is there anybody that's still left there while you were there? You know, there's a few. Um, Mahalani Richardson, as you know, she is. She came back from the mainland and is at KGM, well, Hawaii News now. Mm -hmm. And let's see, who else is on air? I believe, is Keahi Tucker there also? Yes. Yeah, so Keahi Tucker was gone when I left, but I understand he did come back in a, after a while. Guy Hagi and... I don't know everybody on the air, on the air, but there are a few people, and of course, behind the scenes, the the main driver of that station, Brenda Salgada Demello, who yes. runs the desk. And and you can call her the powerhouse because that she is. I mean, actually, a powerhouse power lifter, as I learned. Oh, oh yeah. Right? I call her the. Okay. I still call her boss lady, and I get inspired. You know, we're speaking about health. She is a power lifter, and you know, as we all get a little bit older, she still really shows that the age should not defy you when you do health or fitness, because she is like doing all of those Olympic style power lifts and goes to the gym, does her hula. So yeah, she's certainly the power lady. Yes, I know. I I wasn't aware of that because you look at her. She's not. Uh, she doesn't write because she's not all bulked up. She just does it, and it's all the muscle strength that she's mm -hmm. um, working on. So she's going for power. And yes. I really admire all her accomplishments, even up to this day. Oh, absolutely. Right? Yeah. yeah, she and is like, a part of it. And like you said, even at our age or her age, uh, she's still in it and she just loves the sport. So, you know, I was really curious. I know you people on TV, you got to get up early or you got to stay up late and you do all your stories and all of that. So what is like, you know, your lifestyle behind going on TV. I mean, you must have to carry out a line because, I mean, a lifestyle that's extra healthy because you're on camera all the time and people are looking and, you know, they're human. They're going to judge and critique. So what is some of the value of what do you do on, you know, uh, behind the scenes for your health and nutrition? Well, you know, the, when I was younger, the looking good aspect was totally cosmetic, right? So you want to be seen as this, well, he looks good, you know, in person and whatnot. And it was important to always kind of stay in shape and not 
have that comment that come up like, well, gosh, you kind of fat then person. I never knew it was that big, but you know, you, you, you hear comments from the public. So I think that that was a driver way back when I first got into TV news as, as you transition to, you know, a little bit older in forties, maybe in fifties, you realize that it's important because of your health. So the aspect of the vanity, the cosmetic side of it all kind of transitions into, yeah, I like be healthy when I old, like right now. So I think that's why your fitness goals change as you also age. Right. I know it's a, it looks like a very glamorous life, you know, being in front of the, the camera all the time, but I know that everyone must work really hard at um, not just looking good, but feeling good because how you feel is how you're going to project the news and the outcome of your, your production on a daily basis. So that's quite important, being able to maintain yes, that absolutely. level of health and wellness. Absolutely. Right? Yes. And then you, you mentioned that you did go to California. So you were doing the news in Sacramento? Uh-huh. Right. I came to this uh, station, and I, that's the reason why I moved from, from KGMB to California, because I got a job off. My, at the time, I had an agent, and she had really worked my tapes to make it big in TV news. So Sacramento was a huge jump. It was its market or was market 20 at the time. Back then, Honolulu was market 73. So to jump all those markets to get into this market to me, okay, I made it. I, I'm going to make it into stardom and be this first Asian male anchor on national TV network. You know, that's what my ultimate goal was. So yeah, it was a big culture shock and it was well worth it. I, I think that was the right thing to do. I missed the islands immensely, but it was um, a good challenge and I learned so much moving into a big market and the way things are done here is so cutthroat back instead of like in Hawaii where you kind of hang loose hey brother you like get the sound by Kate go first and just, uh, go say, share the mic you know over here it's one you're all all on your own there is really no aloha in some of the markets that you work but just because it's so competitive it's very competitive I mean you're going against all the other 49 states right there but again you know, and we see all the, uh, like, the mockeries that they do on, on movies and how the men and the women have to do everything to stay, you know, at their best. And like yes. you said, basically, it all comes down to your personal lifestyle and what yeah. do you do when you're not on the camera. Mm -hmm. right? I, absolutely. I think it's so important that you stay in shape for good reasons, though. You know, I think, like I said, the cosmetic side of looking good and fitting into that tight suit and really having that you know, nice jawline when the lights are on was something that you got to consider. But at the same time, what's going on inside here? You know, you could be totally looking good on the outside, but inside is what's going to carry you on to your senior year. So the transition to eating healthy and not staying up and partying all night and getting that sleep that you need, very key. But for all industries, you need to just make sure you get that rest, the nutrition. And, right. that, and that uh, discipline, right? Yeah, absolutely, the discipline. Yeah, Correct. yeah. And uh, I know that you must got, got got some discipline from your your career change, I want to say. But So when did you get involved with the National Guard in California? Well, you know, it actually, my involvement with the military went back to my days in Hawaii. I was uh, your traditional guard soldier where I would just go to drill one week in a month, two weeks out of the year. It was fun. Yeah, raha, boo, boo, bam, bam, play, play with, the, with your weapons and do all the army drills that you do. Then, you know, the events of 9-11 certainly changed everything for every guard soldier across the nation. And that made us all be activated to the two wars that were going on in Iraq and Afghanistan. So in 2005, I got my mobilization orders. It was a pivotal time for me in my civilian career because I had just gotten a really good offer to take my career to the next level. Unfortunately, I got the deployment orders to Iraq at the same time. So it came down to, okay, I signed up for this in peace meaning my army contract, do I bail on it now or do I honor what I went to training for and go forward with that? So I had to respectfully kind of decline that TV offer and my agent was extremely upset. She said, there is no way you're going to get this offer even when you come back from your deployment. I said, I get it. But I signed this and I went on to do my military duty is kind of where it kind of ended my TV career uh, because I had two, two deployments back to back. Wow. That, well, what a different... Um... I mean, such so so different your career path. But then yeah. I know that um, being in the National Guard, uh, you served your, our country. You went and you got deployed, and then you were a, found a way to be able to mix yes. both your careers. So yeah. tell us what did that look like? Well, it was interesting. Before I got actually sent to Iraq, the current station I was working at, I had left the original station I came to Sacramento for, and was given a 
opportunity at the ABC affiliate here in Sacramento. And so when my producers and management found out, they said, hey, why don't you do um, a soldier's diary kind of report for us once a week from Iraq? And so I'm like, okay, that sounds like a good, good way to still stay on camera and give good reports. So I was able to do that mixed in with my job in Iraq, which was to take reporters into the battlefield, into the to combat. And it was all the reporters from national and international press. But along the way, I got to do some stories too. So I would do a live shot with my Sacramento station uh, every Wednesday morning. And then, you know, because they would see a network feed, other stations across the nation asked me to start personalizing it with other soldiers that could be from maybe Louisiana. I did a report for Hawaii. I did, you know, many California networks and, you know, just all around here and there because again, the feed was there. So the producers would see that and they say, hey, there's a local boy here that could do stories for other stations. So that became kind of like a niche and a really unique opportunity for me in the midst of one of the most challenging 18 months of my life. So that's kind of how it blended together with TV news and being a soldier because of what I did in the military. Wow. See how, how, you know, Kyoko just has a plan for all of us. Amen. Amen. You know, yes. he trained you local, you know, in front of a camera. And then, you know, you signed up to be part of the National Guard and you did what you had to do. You had some, you know, your, as, as you said, your agent wasn't happy when you went and you decided that that's the career you wanted to go towards. But then you didn't sort of, you didn't leave it totally. It came with you and you were yes. able to serve our country and have your passion at the same time. So, but first of all, I wanted to say mahalo, Jonathan, for serving our country for, I believe it's 28 years that you've been serving our country. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to show you my white hair. Take us yeah. to no more hair on top here, but yeah. No, but you know what? Everyone, white. every white hair well deserved. So we all want to just say mahalo oh. for serving our country. And the blessing is that you're able to carry on doing what you wanted to do, because I believe you carry the title of Chief of Media Relations in the yes. National Guard. So that's oh. like, touche. Both, well, thank you. Best of both worlds. Okay, now. I appreciate it. So now when you were, in, you know, doing deployments, tell us what was it like? How would you stay fit? And what was your nutritional intake like while, while you were serving? Well, you know, I will tell you the U.S. Army and all the active forces in a forward area, the soldier care or the service member care was tremendous. Okay, we had we had hot meals every three, three four hot meals a day. So the, the key that became the thing to really focus on was not overeating because, you know, you went to a different four operating base or wherever we would be driving to, there would be hot chow. And the hot chow wasn't anything to complain about, okay? It was really good food. They took, they do take good care of soldiers in a forward area. So, but at the same time, there were many, many gyms that were in the bases that we operated on, out of. So it became that same thing, like you have to really watch your time. Like if you knew you were gonna go on a mission during the day, I would be up at like three, four o'clock in the morning just to get to the gym to do my exercise, to get my cardio in, to get some strength training in, because it was very key in that time frame to be fit because of what could go on and what you don't know what might happen, but to be mentally alert, to be physically there, to be able to respond. So I think it was very key to work that in. And my soldiers that I worked with, we all had that same mindset because it was very easy to get into that surf and turf meal and just, just gorge yourself with this wonderful food and then go to bed, you know? So um, it really, you really became disciplined, like you said, to watch and how much you eat per night, per meal. Right, because you could not afford a Kanak attack while serving, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Because if yeah. you're su suffering from Kanak attack, then and then something happened is going down, and where are you? You're not on your 100%. So how can you be a great soldier if you're not 100%? Uh, absolutely. You got that right. Wow. That's so I'm, right. I'm just grateful that you all have that same mindset in your command, and I'm sure, you know, each of you... Um, had something to do with that, that that's the lifestyle you all chose. So that's what we, you know, what your command produced. So touche for that attitude. Yes, absolutely, yeah. totally agree. That's, that's amazing. So, you know, in our next slide, I don't know what's going on in your next slide, but can you tell me what's happening here? There's both you and yes, that, that gentleman there. 
What's well, that is, that is uh, NBC News anchor Brian Williams, okay? And there were some controversies surrounding his actual deployment when he was covering news in Iraq. But the bottom line with, with him was when I went to arrange, it was a pretty high-profile media event, and he was there for NBC. And I walked up to him and just said, this is before the controversy thing, controversial things broke. But I went to shake his hand. He goes, no, let me shake your hand. I see that you have a combat action badge on your shoulder there. So it shows me that you were involved with some type of combat action when you were in wherever you went. I said, well, gosh, that, that's so amazing that someone will like you. He goes, no, no, you're the one that you, American soldiers, you're the, you're the heroes here. And it just, I was like, that hit me really hard. Here's this national anchor wow. that, you know, little old nobody me um, is getting accolades from. I thought, you know, it, it, despite what you might say about some of these news anchors or how big their egos are, he actually was very sincere. I felt that. And that's the exchange. He said, I, I want to take a picture with you. So wow. I was very humbled. I was very just honored that he took the time to take a picture with me. Wow. Well, I hope he's watching this show and he's <laughs> give him a I shout hope. out. So make sure he sees it. So I he think he just retired, actually, you know, so I don't think he's watching, but I'll send, oh, hey, wow. Brian, check it out. Okay? I'll send him an email. There you get go. Yeah, you get Twitter. it to him. Make sure. <laughs> so, you know, um, I know you rose to the rank of lieutenant colonel. Can you tell us when did you reach that rank and um, what was the journey like? Well, you know what's so interesting about making lieutenant colonel, my final school that I had to go to attain this rank actually took place at Fort Shafter in Honolulu. Okay, so there, there was no openings on the continental U.S. schoolhouses, so I called my buddy who was a sergeant major at the Fort Chapter facility, and he said there was X amount of slots that were open. I'm like, you know, I, what, how, how much better could that be to come back home and spend a month training and getting schooled in the islands with some of your peers, and then nighttime, go hang out with your KGMB friends or go back fly to Maui and get mom and dad to come home for dinner and catch the next flight back to Honolulu. So it was the best of both worlds. And I think I ran into you that trip at Willows. In fact, you were doing a few things with the Miss Hawaii pageant. And I think that is correct. Miss Hawaii, and we were like, hey, Wendy, what's up? You know, and I think Willows shut down, right, eventually, but right. it was nice to see. So it was that kind of homely, Hominess, not homeliness, hominess <laughs> to be back in the islands and uh, get my final school to obtain the rank of lieutenant colonel. So that's really nothing all that serious, but it, it meant a lot to me. Wow. You know, and I also have to ask, you know, you're still active duty. Uh, I'm serving right now. So what was your life like in the last two years of this um, uh, COVID uh, duration? That's such a good question, Wendy. I actually was in India, uh, Barcelona and Rome at this time uh, two, uh, two years ago. Okay, so I was traveling on this wonderful trip, the trip of a lifetime with a really great set of friends. And around February 17th, um, while I was still in, I believe I was in, I was in India, I, I got an email from my command saying, we just named you uh, Director of Public Affairs. I'm like, oh, great, thank you. And then I get back. <laughs> And then the world started to shut down. And the world is still, of course, dealing with this pandemic that we know as COVID. So my first year on the job was, was nonstop. It just went from one mission to another and good or bad, indifferent to what the conditions were like outside. It, it really tested the, I guess, integrity of us all to try to remain hopeful and positive and continue to try to bring that hope to the public that, you know, things will get better. And that was my mission constantly to say to people, you know, we will get through this. And, and I think when people hear that from, from someone that's in the armed services, they get a sense of security or they feel that peace. And I, I tried to bring that in wherever I went because you were dealing with a panicked country, a panicked world, not knowing what to expect. And there's some of that still, you know, but I think we are coming to terms with what this is and, and hoping for the best and, you know, really trusting in our faith to, to help us through all of this. So it's been an interesting journey for two years and it's still not over, Wendy, you know that. So it's, it's, we just have to hold on. Now. Yeah, we just have to hold on to each other and, and exactly. hold on to that good mana that we have inside of, inside of us and, and spread Amen. that mana. Yep. You know, um, in the midst of the pandemic, how do you work out without going to the gym? I mean, I know you're talking about, I see you, you know, on Facebook and workout clothes and, and all of that. But in, despite the pandemic, how did you work out without going to the gym? 
You know, and I also, on the a, a side, I'm a personal trainer too. So, you know, the gym that I was, it was a boutique gym. And sadly, my clients all at the first part of the pandemic, just there was just no interaction, right? You really didn't know what Zoom was like what we're doing right now. Right. But as time moved on, what I did personally was I turned my garage into my no gym, no excuse kind of scenario where, you know, I had some weights, I had kettlebells, I had, you know, um, the Bosu ball i had a whole bunch of things that i could use but i really tried to focus on body weight exercises because what i've learned through all of my travels as a journalist as a military member as you know just someone that's in the fitness industry is there's going to be places that you just have nothing to work out with but you have your body okay and your body is an excellent weight if you will especially with big how big maokole is so you know it helps with the squats but anyway you can do you can find really good exercises and i encourage anybody to reach out to me i'd be more than happy to develop a you know a type of program for you but really focusing on body weight type of workouts because you can get a good workout no matter where you are if there's nothing around use your body use a chair use use a i was on my my mom's house about two weeks ago in the backyard i saw one bag of fertilizer so i grabbed the fertilizer just did squats then hold it here then i did overhead presses and then i walked around you know the block they thought i was an idiot probably walking with the fertilizer but there's things you can find that are around your house right and your body again is a good way to use that weight you know it's so funny because on um, that you're talking about this because this morning actually on the news um, there was a, they, they, did a, they did a feature story on this guy. I think he must have been like 400 pounds. Local guy lives in Makakino side. And um, 400 pounds. And he, um, I don't know how long ago, a year or so ago, he looked in the mirror and he said, wow, is that really me? And he was not very happy with himself. So then he started to go to the park, like you said. And they show him on the park, at the park with his kids rolling around on the grass and just doing um, sit-ups. And doing mm -hmm. so, can there you imagine, you right? His body weight, and for him to do a sit up must have been very difficult. But yeah. he continued and continued, and he started walking with his kids, and he did more and more and more. You know that he's under two hundred pounds now. Good for him. Brother, yeah, keep so, working. Keep working. yeah. So we want to encourage him. In fact, I would love to have him come on the show as well. But what they said is that he's now half the man that he used to be, <laughs> right? And, then, and that's, that's a good thing. That's a good thing for him. It's a very good thing. So, you know, it doesn't matter where you are, or even if you have no equipment, your body, like you said, serves as a perfect tool to get in shape. Uh -huh. You are absolutely right on point with that statement. Mm -hmm. I'm, yeah, so I just want people to know that. And that's good that you bring that up, Jonathan, because that's a very, very excellent thing that people all think we have to go to the gym or do all of that stuff. No. But no, we don't, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's a good thing to point out. You know, I think when we're younger, you know, when I was in college, you know, you hang out with the other jocks and you hang with the baseball players, the volleyball players. And the thing to do is get the big arms, get that benching done because, you know, impress the girls, get that date and look really good. Right. Uh, but as you go get older, you, you have to be really accepting of what you're able to do. You know, with my coach today, we're talking about, yeah, I'm not going to be doing these gigantic power lifts and, you know, snatching that weight up like this to throw out my back being at the level or being at that age group that you know responsibly how to work out if you need a trainer to help you with that you should get that training um and really no good form good form is probably the best thing that you need to remember because you can do something wrong and then hurt yourself so you don't want to get that in in your daily schedule where you have to address a modification because of an injury you know, right. so you do it the right way right and we have to be age appropriate yeah, absolutely Right? Absolutely. I mean, like for myself, I'm not a big fan of the gym, pake, or just the commitment, <laughs> but, but I do walk. I walk from my hill, I walk down, I go to Omana, and I surf regularly. That's right. I know you right. want to surf for you. Was at, you was at Waianae last week, right? Yeah, <laughs> just the other day. It was too big, though. So again, being real and age appropriate, went back to uh, graveyards at Waikiki, and I surfed. It was only like maybe two feet, three feet, but it was age appropriate for me. I got a good three-hour workout. It felt good. The sun felt good on my body, but that's what we need to do. Just get out there. Just move. Yeah, you know, just absolutely. move. Basically, that's all we got to do is just get out there and move, right? I, I totally agree with you. You know, move more, intake less. Probably is the <laughs> easiest way to keep yourself yeah, in check. I better write that down. Move more, intake less or more. Or like <laughs> less famu be move, walk oh, two more oh, miles. That's the hard part, working on that. But 
it's a it's a happy medium that we have to absolutely reach, yes. right so Don, Jonathan I know that you are a dog lover I know you love dogs and that's an understatement you truly believe in man's best friend is absolutely the fur, fur four-legged ones so I know yes. you that you're a proud papa of three Keyshawns I have a side of you with one but then I have another side of you with your other three babies why Keyshawns you know, strangely enough, my first Kisan was was in Hawaii. There was a breeder in Eva, and um, my wife at the time and I always were, we were studying what breed we should get. You know, and so the the, the Dutch say Kisan, we Americans say Kishan. The studying the type of breed that it is, I fell in love with it. So when we got my first Kisan, Kishan Omega. She was everything that I wanted. She's very loving, very, you know, a little bit feisty, kind of kolohe, but they're very good alert dogs. They will never, ever bite anybody, but mm. they will be next to you constantly. So the picture you see with me by myself is with Koa, and Koa is actually, uh, he's, a, he's a rescue. Koa was a, a trained medical alert dog for, sadly, a lady named Judy who passed away, but she had him trained so much. She actually reached out to me. There's a very heartwarming story, and I'll say it in 10 seconds. She reached out to me in her last days because she saw me on Facebook, and she said she reached out to my breeder, who was the same breeder as who I got my dogs from, and said, I would like you to contact this lieutenant colonel in California to take my dog, Koa. Well, his name was Draco at the time when I passed because I think he would take care of my dog very well. So ultimately, that's what happened. I drove down to San Diego to pick Koa up after meeting him. I remember and that's that. Why he's I do remember that. Yeah. yeah. That's why I have him now. I renamed him Koa because he was Judy's protector. And then my other Kalohe boy, you see in the three pictures, sadly I lost Ikaika, my really dark one, in mm -hmm. February because he was he was ill. So I had to help him go to the Rainbow Bridge. But Nalu, my youngest one means wave and he is always a constant wave just moving and like a big tsunami fur ball coming down yes. the aisle so they're they're my life they they really helped me during the pandemic oh, because in a, yeah in addition to working out in the in the garage they would be my my class so i say okay brothers we go work out and they would just watch me obviously but they would be my my clients so yes. they help me pets and working out help me make it through the pandemic wow so you're a great example of a single man that has true balance in his life, your career choices, your companionship with your fur babies, and the love and respect for family and friends, and making the time always to go and visit you with them. That's, that's yeah. I commend yeah. you for that. So I know we're running short on time, but I know um, I want to just say Maui Boy does good. So let's summarize your outstanding career in a quick few seconds. And what are your plans for your next chapter in your life? I am planning to move back to Hawaii when I retire from the Army, which is in November of this year, and find something hopefully in the tourism industry. I would really want to be an ambassador of Aloha at my old age. I, feel I got that the job for you. I got the right job for you. <laughs> Please, so you, you make the move you and we'll me. make the move on this side. <laughs> Well, okay, so, that's what I okay, want to do. So, but we, you know, Jonathan, we have to leave it there for now. We'll continue with your second chapter of your life. But you've been watching Taking Your Health Back on Think to Kauai. Mahalo to Jonathan Shiroma Masaki for talking story with us and serving our country for the last 28 years. Our country mahalos you, and we're so proud of you. I'm Wendy Lowe. We'll be back in two weeks. See you all then. Aloha. Aloha and mahalo.